Guys, Bill Nichols here, Bill Nichols TV. Today, I'm traveling, I wanted to get a video out. So I thought I would go back, because there's been a number of questions, and talk about three areas that you should really focus on for the Part 107 test. You should focus on all the areas, but these are three areas where there were quite a few questions. I'm gonna go through one or two questions in each area, give you some ideas of what to focus on to help you out with your Part 107 test. All right, guys, so today the three areas that I'm going to go through are crew resource management. There's a bunch of questions. I'm going to give you one that's a pretty easy one, but crew resource management, or CRM it'll be referred to, is something you definitely want to study on. So it talks about roles and responsibilities, and then what techniques should a remote pilot in command use to minimize risk um, across the crew and across an operation. Uh, CTAP frequencies, the common traffic advisory frequencies, how you identify those, what they're used for and one of the scenarios where they try and trip you up on the test, and then whether specifically the characteristics of air. Guarantee that the two questions that I put on for the, what, for the weather, for the characteristics of air, are two that you will receive on the test, more than likely. If they're not word for word, they're gonna be very close. So let's get started. Let's start right into crew resource management. So this is a question from the FAA sample test. It's question number 17. In the PLT 372 that you see, if you just search FAA PLT 372, UAG, you'll get a list of the PLTs, which these are the, the learning objectives or the learning areas for the test, and there's a whole list of what they are. And after you take your test, whatever questions you get wrong, they're gonna list the PLTs associated with those questions. You won't get the actual question, but you'll get the area that you were missing in. So the question here is, according to 14 CFR Part 107, the responsibility to inspect the small UAS to ensure it is in a safe operating con condition rests with, the remote pilot in command, the visual observer, or the owner of the small UAS. A little bit of a trick question. It's not the owner. It is the remote pilot in command. Any time, one tip, any time on the test that you say, who does the responsibility lie with? Or the person that is responsible for making the choice. Or you see that responsibility word in a question, it is more than likely going to be the remote pilot in command. So really quickly, let's, let's run through some crew roles. You're gonna wanna know these roles because you might be asked word for word on the test. So the remote piloting command or the PIC, it is someone who holds a current remote pilot certificate with an SUAS rating, so a small UAS rating, and is ultimately the person responsible for the flight. And that PIC, they identify, delegate, and manage all operational tasks. So anything that falls to the successful completion of that operation, the responsibility lies completely with the remote PIC. A visual observer, additional crew member to help maintain visual line of sight and help see and avoid other air traffic. So see and avoid is something that you're gonna hear on the test. You're gonna hear what is the responsibility of a visual observer. A visual observer isn't required um, as long as the PIC or the remote PIC can maintain visual line of sight as well as conduct the remote pilot and command duties. And then the person manipulating the controls, this is the person that's actually manipulating the remote control. This can be the remote PIC, or it can be somebody under the supervision of the remote PIC. So you could be hired as the remote PIC for a company that has their own cinematographer or their own drone pilot, and as part of an operation, you could brief them on the safety procedures. You could lay out an operational plan. So where are they going to fly? What elevations? What's the plan here? What are the contingencies if something goes wrong? And then you can directly observe them and be able to take over in the event that you needed to to maintain a safe operation. But the remote PIC doesn't have to be the pilot. You can have a different person manipulating the controls, as it's called, and you can be in direct supervision of them. So one area to really look at, so if you haven't studied for crew resource management, definitely do. There were probably um, somewhere between four and seven questions specifically around crew resource management. Some of them are really tricky. CTAF, or Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. There's one way that they'll try and trip up this question. So I brought out uh, question number 24 on the FAA sample test, and it says refer to figure 22, area two, at Coeur d'Alene, which frequency should be used as a common traffic advisory frequency to monitor airport traffic. And the way that you identify this is right here. So we've got um, Coeur d'Alene, and you'll see in Coeur d'Alene that you've got um, your AW, their AWOS, so your automated weather station, dash three, that's 135075. So if you wanted to listen to the automated weather, tune into 135.075. 
But down below that, you'll see the 122.8 with the shaded C there. That is the CTAF frequency. It's 122.8, so the answer here would be C. And the CTAF, it's a VHF radio frequency for air-to-air -air communication. So you may get asked that. Um, one question that you might get asked is, uh, how do two pilots talk to each other that are coming into airport so-and-so? Or the other one that you might get asked is, when the, let's say, refer to figure 22 area two, when the Coeur d'Alene airport is closed, what frequency would you tune in to, to monitor air traffic? And that's just the same as this frequency right here. That frequency doesn't change. So you've got, unless it's noted there, so you've got 122.8 for this one. You can see it right below the Coeur d'Alene. So quite a few um, questions on frequencies, but very easy. Look for that C, or you might be asked, I don't think that I was asked a frequency for, a weather, for weather monitoring, but right there, 122.8 for monitoring air-to-air -air communication. The pilots use this to coordinate their arrivals and departure safely, gives them position reports and acknowledge other aircraft that are in that airfield traffic pattern. And then um, they just might trick, trick you up by saying, when the airport is closed, what frequency would you um, listen to? The last area that I want to look at today, like I said, I want to make this a short video, but um, this is one that you will definitely get these two questions, if not word for word, very close, and then you might get some um, variations of these. So around stable and non-stable air, a little bit counterintuitive here. You think of stable air as being nice weather. You know, it's nice and still and stable. But um, so let's go to question 37. What are characteristics of a moist, unstable air mass? Okay, so you've got turbulence and showery precipitation, poor visibility and smooth air, haze and smoke. And then um, for this one, it's turbulence and showery precipitation. Then what are the characteristics of stable air? So you've got A, good visibility and steady precipitation, B, poor visibility and steady precipitation, or C, poor visibility and intermittent precipitation. So if you were to put together a table of just visibility and precipitation, stable air has poor visibility, fair to poor, and steady precipitation. Unstable air has good visibility and intermittent or showery precipitation. And the easy way to think of that, of the, at least the visibility, is if you think of stable air, that's an air mass that isn't moving. So any haze or smoke or fog, um, any air pollutants, anything that's in the air there, doesn't have air moving to move it out of the way. So when you have stable air, that air isn't moving vertically, it's not moving horizontally, it's mostly staying right there, and so you can have poor visibility, so fair to poor. When you have unstable air, that's air that's moving around, so it's clearing stuff out, and you're gonna have better visibility. And in the same way, in stable air, you have showers that can just fall, and unstable air is moving around, so you can have showery precipitation. So easy way to think of those, just think uh, stable, poor visibility, unstable, good visibility. So if we go in right here, we've got this slide, and I'll put these um, slides, I'll print them out to a PDF. There'll be a link in the description, you can go download them. So you will have two or more questions on the characteristics of air. So non-stable or unstable air, you have good visibility, cumuliform clouds, so cumulus clouds, and showery precipitation. So those cumulus clouds, those are the ones that are gonna turn into thunderstorms, or um, you know, you're gonna get those big thunder clouds. And stable air, limited visibility. So it seems counterintuitive, but the air isn't moving, so the visibility is limited. Stratiform clouds, so these are, that's, these are your nice even cloud layers, and then continuous precipitation when there is. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to go over three areas of focus. Um, I didn't know any of these beforehand, and I know that I've said it before, but I learned all of this through dronepilotgroundschool.com. Look in the description for some information. I highly recommend if you're taking the test, whether it's through them or through somebody else, don't rely on just the FAA study guide. I don't think it's enough. Um, I really think that you need somebody else helping you that's gone through this and has built a good course. There are a few out there. I recommend dronepilotgroundschool.com. Everything here is what I learned from them. I pulled most of this directly from the FAA sample test and then some FAA guides, but um, everything that I learned was from dronepilotgroundschool.com. So go check them out. If nothing else, um, I highly recommend them. I use them to pass. But I'm going to post some videos now and then on some tips for the Part 107. A lot of people, after I post the video about passing, ask for some tips. So these are my three areas of focus, at least for this week. Like, pick an area to focus on for a week. Maybe focus on these this week, and then go find all the information that you can. So crew resource management, CTAF frequencies, and weather. All right, guys, you have a great day. 
Thanks for watching. Almost up at 7,500 subscribers. Giving a bag away. Check the description below to go to that video. Like, share, subscribe. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up right now so that a lot more people will see it and then share it out there. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have an awesome day. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos.